time. Oh, I'm waiting for your signal. <laughs> okay, let's do three ohms and sahana Oh. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvina Bhadhita Mastu Mavit Vishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Rastotram Akhanda Mandala Karam Vyaptam Yena Characharam Tatpadam Darsitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Agnana Timirandhasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chachu Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Gurur Brahma Gurur Vishnu Gurur Devo Maheshwaraha Gurur Eva Param Brahma Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Stavaram Jangamam Yaptam Yatkim Chisacharacharam Tatpadam Darsitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Chinmayam Yapiat Sarvam Trilokyam Sacharacharam Tatpadam Darsitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Tomiva Mata Chapita Tomiva Tomiva Bandhus Chasakat Tomiva Tomiva Vidyadravidam Tomiva Tomiva Sarvam Amadeva Deva Tomiva Sarvam Gurudeva Deva So let's read Sloka 24 Sadantaram sajatiyam, Sadantaram sajatiyam, Navai lakshanya varnanat, Navai lakshanya varnanat, Namaru podi bedam, Amaru podi bedam, Vina naiva sato bida. Vina naiva sato bida together Sadantaram sajatiyam Navai lakshanya varnanat Namaru podi bedam Vina naiva sato bida Sadantaram sajatiyam Navai lakshanyam varnanat So this Nama rupa, the creation involves the names and forms. But the names and forms came after the creation. So before the creation, what was there? So what was there is Sad Eva Somya. So we do not we cannot know what was there before creation because the creation itself is anadi, means beginningless. So what was before? Before is a concept of time, and the time itself is not there. So the question itself is invalid. But scripture says, since we are looking for something, what was there before, what is the source from which the whole creation came. So, what was there is existence alone was there before creation. Sat eva idamagramasi tekam eva advitiyam. So, he is analyzing that statement. And therefore, 
what was there before creation is only a statement of the scriptures because from our point from the creator point or from the created point because the jiva is asking a question jiva is already in the creation and is asking a question this is a creation because scripture says so so all religion says so this is a creation so what was there how did it created what was there before creation so this is god was there before creation creator was there before creation that's what the all scriptures say god was there because god cannot be created so god was there before creation so and what is the nature of the god so it is scripture says existence alone was there before creation so nature of the god is god is that means god exists and is nature of consciousness because later in the same scripture says tada ichchada bahusyam hitsa and there is nothing to see therefore it is of the nature of self conscious and self existent in fact only self conscious and self existent alone is was can be there before everything else is para adhina satvam that means it depends upon something other than them for its existence because existence are already there before so what was their existence alone was there and therefore what happened after creation the same existence is expressing itself in different names and forms because the existence that was there before is ekam eva advitiyam that means it is infinite and therefore there cannot be anything other than existence and therefore if there is a creation it itself has to become something and that becoming something is normally possible not possible for for infinite because any becoming something is a modification and existence being infinite it cannot create itself anything it cannot create anything at all so then what is this creation so these all puzzling things only way to resolve is nama roopa the creation is just nothing but names and forms on top of the existence that's called adhyasa as what we discussed last time it is only a superimposition of what is there what is there only existence but i am seeing something other than existence because i cannot see existence but i am seeing the varieties and varieties of things and names and i am giving importance to this differences in the creation because each one is different and therefore this vailakshyam vailakshyam is the the varieties or differences of one one anath various descriptions of the individual names and forms are only at the superficial level at the substantive level it is just the existence itself expressing in many forms so that's what is essentially the description by the scripture and scripture gives three examples just like the gold is expressing itself in varieties of names and forms just as the mud expressing itself in various parts just as the iron expressing in terms of iron tools in the same way same existence itself expressing in different varieties of names and forms so sad antaram that means after the creation sajatiyam na vailakshyam manyate there is no different types of existence in the existence even after the creation so even though there is a varieties of things in the creation there are various people and objects and worlds and all that there seems to be distinctions of various types there is a sajati vijati swagata bedas in the creation because the trees are different and in the trees varieties of trees are there that is a sajati and the the uh, trees are different from stones so that's a vijati so all these distinctions are there everyone looks he is different from other person even though they are all put together as a human being as sajati one jati within the jati you have varieties of differences and between the humans and animals and very various types of animals or species are there so all these vilakshyam that means varieties of differences cannot be there in the existence so here we have to look into one aspect of it 
I cannot look for Sajati, I cannot look for Brahman. Because I am one of the part of the Sajati, I am part of this existence and I cannot, I cannot perceive or I cannot deduce existence as separate from me. Because I am, one, I am also existence and only I can see or difference in the, only in the objects that I can see. So I am looking for Brahman. Where are you looking for? So I am not this, I am not this, I am not this, I am eliminating all this that I can see, but still I am longing for, a, for that Brahman you will never see. <laughs> see, because I am negating everything and only thing that is non-negatable is only myself. That is, I am, because I cannot dismiss myself, I can dismiss everything else, but that I cannot see myself. I cannot see I am this, right? because I cannot be an object. I am a subject and I, everything else is an object. So, looking through the objects, I have to deduce that there is a subject, because without the subject, there cannot be objectification. Follow now? Because every time I perceive there is a duality is coming in, I am a subject and this is what I am seeing, this is what I am hearing, this is what I am tasting. So all five senses are gathering varieties of objects only and objects are coming in the form of a thought process or vritti and I am a subject, a knower of the thought and the thought is there and I am there. And this subject object is always there as long as mind is there. So what should I do to go beyond? So oh, you have to go beyond the mind. How do I go beyond the mind? Oh, you sit in meditation and go beyond the mind. If I go beyond the mind, nothing will happen. <laughs> I may go to sleep. So because there is no way I can perceive or I can deduce that there is something other than me. And there is something other than existence. So, a realization or recognition or recognition is cognizing from what I see and then I deduce that I am in and through what I see. So, looking at the world, I have to see Brahman. Looking at the thoughts, I have to see the Brahman. If I try to suppress the thoughts, I go to deep sleep state only most of the time. and. There is a yoga samadhi where idea is to be myself there where I myself identify myself with the, the total where I don't need any thought because I am there without the thought also. But that can be true provided I have a knowledge that I am there even in the samadhi and that is complete and total existent consciousness. So, only with the knowledge I can start doing the samadhi. Without the knowledge, the knowledge will not take place just by the samadhi process and without the knowledge, I may close my mind, I may reduce my thoughts, I may eliminate all the thoughts, but when I come back, all those duality will come back. There is no knowledge of it. So, understanding should be, I am there, the world is not there, world is there. I am there, world is not there. I am there all the time, whether the world is there or world is not there. The waking world is there, I am there. Dream world is there, I am there. Deep sleep safe world is there, I am there. I am beyond the three worlds, worlds keep changing, but without the worlds, I cannot be myself as I am because I need something to see. So how is that? Lord, I give example in the 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 Purnima day when you look at the sun, when you look at the moon, it says I had to see the sunlight there and sunlight is all pervading there in the sky, but I cannot recognize the all pervading sunlight there. I need a moon to recognize that there is a sunlight there. Right? So, without an object there, I cannot perceive that which illumines the object. So, through every object perceptual process, I had to see there is a light of consciousness beaming which or because of which I am able to see this 
this, this, this. And without this, 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 even though consciousness is there, I cannot recognize it. So this has to be understood in the process. So, and whatever the Nama Rupa or creation is, Upadi Bedham. So, Nama Rupa, upa, Nama Rupa Upadi Bedham, Vina Naiva Sato Bidha. So, without the Nama, Nama Rupa, without the names and forms, the existence cannot be differentiated. So, if I say I have, this is watch is. So, is means what? Watch exists. So, existence is there in and through the watch. So, existence is not a property of this watch because existence is there in the space also. It's not a part of the watch because everywhere, every part is exists. So, existence pervades this watch and existence lends its existence lends existence to the watch because if I say watch is, that means watch exists. And if watch is not there, that means watch doesn't exist. So existence, this is watch is implies that there is an existence in the form of a watch that I can perceive. If there is no form, then I cannot see the existence because even if I remove the watch, existence is still there, but I cannot perceive. Just as there is a light falling on my hand and I can see the hand because there is a light already there. But if I don't have the hand, you cannot see the light in the space. So I need for me to recognize either the existence or consciousness. I need an object to reflect back that consciousness or reflect back that existence. And the existence of an object out there is translated as though existence of a thought in my mind. Because when I see an object, a, a vritti or a thought forms in my mind and therefore existence out there has become existence in my mind as thought is. Because thought exists. And when I consciousness this object and existence expressed as an object are together forming for me to know that I am conscious of the existence of the thought which is nothing but reflection of the existence of object outside. So I follow the whole process. So in a very perceptual process what do I have to do? I had to see in and through every thought the light of consciousness getting reflected from the thought without paying attention to the contents of the thought. Thought is only reflecting. Without paying attention to the object my hand which is reflecting the light that is falling on it, you had to see it is the light that I am seeing not the object. Is it really object? <laughs> Question. <laughs> okay, every time only see, I'm seeing the light only coming in. Light is falling and then reflected. Without the object, light will not get reflected. <laughs> so, any attributes of the object, I am not creating attributes. I am only sensing the attributes. So, senses can only gather the attributes and that to the attributes, not real attributes, only reflected attributes. Because it's not the real, it's not the real shape that I am seeing. Only the reflected light from this, and because you don't see the backside of it, you're only seeing the the frontal view of whatever is falling. So only reflected form based on that, because of the shades and all that intensity, you can find a three-dimensional aspect of it in the way the image is being formed. So that is property of the reflection. And the reflection depends upon, hopefully, on the original, because the original is the one is reflecting. So every attribute that the senses gather is only reflected attributes, because attributes belong to the object. So attributes are inseparable from the object, but here the only reflection based on my capacity of my senses I can gather the information. If my, even though it is reflecting, if my senses are defective, then I cannot see the exact what it is, replica of it. So I'm only getting the image of the world. Every time I'm getting image of the world. In all my transactions, I'm only getting the image of the world. I'm assuming that there is an original 
that is reflecting. Just as when I go in front of a mirror, I want to see my face, what should I do? I cannot see my face, right? So what should I do? I need a mirror. Then when I see a mirror, there is an image formed in the mirror and looking at the image, I have to recognize my face. Hey, some black spot is there. Then say, I have to look at the mirror and I don't have to clean the mirror for the black spot. I have to clean myself because the black spot is in the original, not in the mirror. But I need the mirror. If I take the, the image itself as real me, then I have a problem. <laughs> so, implication of it is, I need an image reflection to recognize the original. Without the mirror, I cannot know myself or I cannot see myself. Seeing is knowing also, which implies that self-realization involves recognition of myself in all reflections. In a very thought, I am there because there is a subject-object duality is being formed in the mind. But I am in the subject and I am in the object too. So even though object I am not, when I re re said what its implication is, I am not the names and forms, the violation, the varieties of names and forms, but I am the very substratum or the essence of the objects also. That's what is the Chandogya, Aita Dhatma, Midagum, Sarvam, Tat Satyam, Sa Atma, Tatva Masisveta Keto. So, Aita Dhatma, Idagum Sarvam, this entire universe, Idam, Idam, Idam Sarvam, that means entire this, 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 this that I am seeing, that Aita Dhatma, the essence of that everything that I am seeing is the existence itself, and that is Satyam, that is Sat, and that you are. So, the subject, object, both the duality and in the duality, the substantive of both of the subject and object is Sat Eva. In that, there is no difference of any, no Sajati Vedas are there in that. So, in that, whatever differences that I am seeing is only in the Nama Upadhi. Because of the Upadhi, because of the conditioning of the, of the equipments, you are seeing different. Just like Ghatakasha is different from Mahakasha. So example is, another example is Ghatakasha means the space in the pot is different from space in the room, different from the space outside. So, I have three spaces, right? One is the space Ghada Kasha, Ghada is pot. So, pot space is different from room space, is different from outside space, but space itself is only one. So, these distinctions of pot space, oh, I don't have enough pot, pot space, I need another pot and all that, or I don't have enough space in this room, I need another, another room. All these distinctions and differentiations are only belonging to Upadi. Upadi means the equipments are conditioned and therefore in the existence itself whether it's a pot or patar ghada is called pata ghada this pata means cloth or existence of a cloth or existence of uh, the uh, pot there is no difference in the existence all ex all are only in terms of attributes and that's called the form and a name for it ghada ghada name for Nama Rupa is called Upadi. So there is no, there cannot be any Sajati Beda in this Sat. So you remember what he defined, what are the Sajati Beda, Sagata Beda and, and Vijati Beda. Now he is taking about Sat and taking each one and says it cannot be possible. So he rejected the, the, the Sajati Beda. He rejected Swagata Beda, internal differences, because Sat is infinite. In the infinite, you cannot have internal differences because you cannot, it cannot be parted. So it's not made up of parts, therefore it cannot be divided. So he rejected Swagata Beda and Sajati Beda. Now he is going to take up the Vijati Beda in the Sloka 25. Vijatiya masat tattu, Vijatiya masat 
ಸ್ತು ನ ಖಲ್ವಸ್ತೀತಿ ಗಮ್ಯತೆ ವಸ್ತೀತಿ ಗಮ್ಯತೆ ನಾ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ವಿಜಾತೀಯಾತ ವಿಜಾತೀಯಾತ್ಗದರ್ ವಿಜಾತೀಯಮಸತ್ತು ನ ಖಲ್ವಸ್ತೀತಿ ಗಮ್ಯತೆ ನಾ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ವಿಜಾತೀಯಾತ್ ಸೊ ವಿಜಾತೀಯ ಅಸತ್ತ 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 ತು ಸೊ ನಾ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿಜಾತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಶುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಜಾತಿ ಸಪೋಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ಸತ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ನಾವು ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸೇ ದಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಎನಿ ವಿಜಾತಿ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿಜಾತಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಸ್ಪೀಸೀಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ವಿಜಾತಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸ್ಟೋನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ the trees so that's called vijati different jati different phylum in science so now who takes sat existence alone was there before now it says there cannot be any vijati in that vijati means there has to be something which is different from sat then only if there are two things one is sat and another is different from sat and that also is there then we say there is a vijati in the brahman total brahman is infinite in the brahman there is one side is existence and another side something different from existence is also existing and therefore we have two things one is of the nature of existence another is of the nature of different from existence now question is what is that which can be different from existence if there is something so only thing that can be different from existence is only non existence <laughs> because everything else exists so if if you say that there is something vijati in the brahman then that can only be non existence vijatiyam asatahatu so therefore indeed whatever that can be which can be different from existence can be only non existence and now how can you say non existence also exist because non existence means it doesn't exist <laughs> therefore the very definition of non existence has it has no existence and therefore in the total brahman which is of the nature of existence there cannot be anything other than existence now kalu ನ ಖಲು ಅಸ್ತಿ ಇದು ಗಮ್ಯತೆ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಲಾಜಿಕಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನ ಸ್ಯಾತ ಸೊ ನ ಅಸ್ಯಾತ ಪ್ರತಿಯೋಗಿ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಸೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಡೆಫಿನೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ನೋ ವೆಲಿಡಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಿಸ್ಟೆನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಇಟ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ so pratyogitva means the very name indicates in fact is that it has no basis so na asyataha so it's it's not possible because the very nature means it's non existence so vijatiya vijayati yat bidakutaha so how can there be possible vijati of different type non existence cannot be there in the creation so there are uh, these words sat asat and existence and non existence are used sometimes in interchangeably so one has to understand what exactly based on the context so here the ex- here he means asat means it has no existence at any time or the correct way of asat definition is and uh, this uh, in the advaita siddhi advaita siddhi is by uh, madhusudana saraswati he has written advaita siddhi in that he has defined he has provided five definitions of falsity because before that there is a narayana tirtha has written uh, nyaya amrutam criticizing advaita he is from the advaita school and he takes up his objections and then he criticizes that so it's a very very uh, it's a more uh, 
epistemological in fact it's more dialect arguments dialectic arguments is uh, the splitting you know, logic hair splitting logic but here the importance is, is essentially the the uh, existence non existence and there is in between according to advaita no pure existence sat there is non existence asat there is in between so what is in between it is neither existence nor non existence so this aspect is heavily criticized by other people so how can you have well, either you say existence you cannot say or non existence you cannot have one which is neither existence nor non existence it's not possible so the whole criticism of the uh, ramanujacharya and madhva he says either you exist say either it doesn't exist you cannot have in between it's called what is that in between is called mitcha mitcha is sada sat vilakshanam definition of mitcha is that which is neither sat nor asat neither exists you say nor doesn't exist so how can that be possible he says that's exactly is possible <laughs> nothing else other than that is possible so how is that so when have we have to understand exactly under what context this words of sat asat and, and the definition of mitya is so sat is ever existent therefore it cannot be dismissed at any time so that trikala abhaditam satyam the definition of sat is that which cannot be negated at any th- any periods of time so is there something like that that which cannot be negated at any period of time i can negate this whole world when i go to dream because the dream world the whole world is gone and i can negate the whole dream world when i go to deep sleep state neither world is there then is the what is there to the, that which remain the same in all periods of time he says the fellow who is negating <laughs> he cannot negate himself he says oh so this is one of the questions raised in the vika chodamani there is nothing there in the in the dream state so i cannot be there he says you are contradicting yourself why because how do you know that there is nothing there <laughs> you have to be there to say that there is nothing there so your existence was there even in the dream state in the deep sleep state to experience the absence of everything else and you have no experience of your own self because the mind is not there but you know you are there you when you say i slept very well so therefore only thing that fulfills the criteria of trikala abaditam which is sat is myself that is the real truth that is the existence alone was there now what is asat which has no existence that's what he is talking about like how can you say there was asat also because if it's also if it is there that means it exists it cannot be non existent then it has to be existence only so therefore non existence can never exist at any time in any locus so now upada there is no locus for its existence of non existence if there is a locus that means the locus exists which means it is there so that is existence is there not non existence other than my gaga babu <laughs> my gaga babu so gaga babu so what is gaga babu i don't know what is gaga babu i don't know if that exists or not so it comes under non existence unless somebody say hey, this is gaga babu if you define some new object and say this is gaga babu that means i am giving a name for a form now i call gaga babu right until then there is no way so the question that was raised and discussed uh, in one of my discussions on advaita vedanta in my text one of the books that i'm going to get published at least this is a, one of the discussions in the advaita list says what is asat one person asked me says this is suppose take a train right So if suppose 1000 years ago or 2000 years ago if I ask what is a train what is a train there is no train right <laughs> of the you unless you call somebody so we cannot have, there is no non existent train does not exist but now if you ask what is a train you will define what is a train you will show me what is a train so train exists now 
So in the past there was no existence of a train, so it, you cannot say it comes under Asat, because now in future it can be a place where there can be a, a train which is existing. So in the in the in the in the Indian logic system, it says what is an example for no Asat? It says the the horns of a hare. Horns of hare means the the. Hairs don't have horns, <laughs> therefore it is non-existence. Uh, suppose in the third world or fourth, uh, you know, in some other galaxies, there may be hair with the horns. Now, what is the reason? No one has seen it, therefore it doesn't, it doesn't exist. So it is a subject to some conscious entity recognizing or not recognizing the existence or non-existence of something you call it asat. But that's not correct definition, the, the Mansudana gives. There is no locus for existence at any time. That is the real asat. And uh, the example is, correct example is Vanjhaputraha. Vanjhaputraha means a son of a barren woman is an example where you, because it's a logical, um, there is a lo illogicality in the statement itself, therefore it cannot have that kind of, uh, existence. So that is the real asat, non-existence. The other thing is that which is trikala badit, trikala baditam, that which remains the same in all periods of time alone is existence. Then what about this world? Does it exist or doesn't exist? If it is not existing, then we cannot experience. If it is existing all three periods of time, it is sat. So it cannot be sat according to our definition. Our definition is that which remains the same in all three periods of time, which does not undergo any change, because I am able to dismiss the whole world and go to dream state and create something else. And therefore, this whole world does not come under the definition of existence. And this does not come under definition of non-existence because I am experiencing. I cannot experience non-existent things. Therefore, it cannot come under asat also. Therefore, it is called mithya. Mithya means it's only name and a form because I am seeing it. So, what is mithya? Whatever you see is mithya. Rishyatva, Shankaracharya says in the, in the definition, what's, how do you know this is Mitya? Because you are seeing it. Whereas other people say, it is Satya because you are seeing it. Whereas Advaitin say, because you are seeing it, therefore it's Mitya. Then what is Sat? I cannot see it. But I am there, whether I see it or not. So even in a pitch dark room, you say, are you there? Yes, I am there. But I cannot see anything. How do you know? I cannot see anything. How do you know you are there? I don't need to see myself. I am self-existing, self-conscious entity. So therefore, I don't need any means of knowledge to know that I am there. And that alone is Sat. And all other Sat, so-called Sat existences have to depend on me. Therefore, whatever mitya is, now we forward, mitya is anya adhina sattvam. Its existence has to be established by something other than itself. In fact, it has to be established by a conscious entity. Why? Because table doesn't say I am existing. I have to say table is. Therefore, every object in the whole universe, including you all, I have to say you are there. From your point, you have to say you are the only subject. So subject is only single. <laughs> you also be, because don't think that everybody is one, one conscious entity. You are alone because you cannot see my consciousness. All you can see is only the body, mind and all the noise you can hear and all that. But you are able to hear only because you are a conscious entity. And therefore you can see, you can hear, you can touch all that. Therefore you prove that I also is exist. Without you present, my existence cannot be established for you. Right? So therefore, when I go to deep sleep state, even though you think the whole world is there, the whole world is gone. 
because from my point of the conscious entity, there is no way to prove the existence or non-existence of the world. It's called indeterminate problem, called anirvachaniyam. According to Dvaita Vedanta, you cannot establish or prove either it exists or it doesn't exist. Oh, I will record it. I'll make a movie of it. When you go to sleep, you go, I'll make a record of the whole world. And then when you get up, I'll show you that even though you slept, the world was still there. But for me to know the world was there, I had to be awake. <laughs> right? That means my consciousness has to see that which you are projecting as the world that was there in the past. Without me present, the existence of the world in the night also cannot be established. You follow now the exact one. So therefore, I am, I am alone is self-existing and therefore self-conscious entity. Only self-conscious entity is self-existing. Everything else depends upon, their existence depends upon me, who is a self-conscious entity. Therefore, vijati yad vidha kutaha, how can there be any non-existence at all possible? So it is a rhetorical question saying that they cannot be possible at all. So that he has negated the non-exist the, the internal differences, Sogata Bedas, he negated the Sajati Beda, and he has negated the Vijati Beda. Now he is summarizing the whole thing in the next sloka. Sloka 26. Yekame vadviti yamsat Kame vadviti yamsat Siddhamatra tu kechana Dramatra tu kechana Vikhvala asade vedam Vikhvala asade vedam Purasi ditcha varnayan Purasi ditcha varnayan Together Ekami vadviti yamsat Siddha matra tu kechana Vikhvala asade vedam Purasi ditcha varnayan So atra ekami vadviti yamsat Siddha matra tu kechana So atra thus we have established Ekami vadviti yamsat is Siddha it is a Siddha means it is established so far that statement of the scriptures as established because it is one without a second. Ekam eva advitiyam. Ekam, he said, corresponds to negation of all Swagata Vedas. Ekam eva, negation of Sajati Vedas. And advitiyam, negation of Vijati Veda. Therefore, the Sat is no difference of any kind possible and that we have established logically. Siddham. Whatever the scriptural statement is logically also established. Atratu. Kechana vikhvala asade vedam pura asid iti varnayan. Now he is going to take the objections by other schools of thought. And there is a and most of the criticism is coming from the Madhyamika Buddhist approach and even the Nayaikas also there, what was there is so the exist non-existence was there. But here the emphasis of this uh, Acharya is on the Madhyamika Buddha philosophy negating the their their arguments. So here the few slokas are going to go about on the Buddhistic theory and say how can that be possible? So here he is saying Kechana Vikhvala. Vikhvala is confused people, some confused people. So without pointing to the who they are. Asad Asade Vedam Pura Asiditi Varnayam. What was there before creation? Non existence was there before creation. And he says these people are Kechana they are really confused. That's what he is judgment call about the uh, 
Majamika. I'm not going to go into, I don't know too much about the Majamika philosophy. And there are arguments, this is what you call is Sat is what they were calling as a Sunyam. And I'm not going to go all that. I'm going to only present what these Acharyas have defined what they understood as the Buddhist. Because nowadays people claim that this is exactly what are the Sunyavadins. So here they call it Sunyavadam. Sunyavadam means there is nothing there. Sunyam is complete absence. So what was there before creation? Sunyam. Because anything objectified is not there. So what was there? Existence alone was there before creation. So what is the nature of the existence? According to Advaita, nature of the existence is not Sunyam. It is not nothing. It is consciousness. So the definition of Advaita is Pragnanam Brahma. The, f the first the Mahavakya of this, what was there is pure consciousness and it has to exist. Therefore, that pure consciousness is existence because there cannot be any differences in that. So, in that consciousness, you cannot have unconscious things. Therefore, it is of no sajati vijati svagati vedas. Therefore, it is pure, unadulterated consciousness, Brahman, as the scripture says. Other people, philosophers like Ramanuja, says it is in fact one. They also say there is one, but in that there are internal differences. As I mentioned in the Sista Advaita, the internal differences is there are in that one existence, there are conscious entities, there are unconscious entities also. That means there are Swagata Vedas. And also, they are Vijati Vedas. Also, even though he says Vijati Veda is not there, because the conscious entities are of different Jati compared to Vijati, compared to unconscious entities. Unconscious means whole world is there for them in a subtle form. So here, the criticism of the other philosophers is, comes into picture, and this is a this is the way our philosophical tradition is. If you are going to propose a new theory or some theory, you have to take up other people's subject, other people's thing and says what's wrong with that and why this is correct. So this is the methodology adopted by our darshanikas, means our acharyas. So for next few slokas, we are going to take up essentially the position of Madhyamika philosophers and why that is wrong. So then, if any Madhyamika philosopher comes, you have an argument. I should tell, there was one fellow by name, Nanda Chandran. It's going to be in my book. Uh, we had an extensive discussion by young, a very young fellow. He was uh, 20 years or 22 years ago. And he wanted to, he was, he was one of the founders of my Adva, our Advaitin list also, along with Ram Chandran and all that. He was also, initially was there. And he wanted to debate with me. <laughs> Whenever he sees me, say, I, was, I want to debate with you. So he was here in, the, in Maryland somewhere, but then he was in England. When I went to England for some conference, he specifically asked me to extend a day so that he can sit with me and debate with me. And he came to my room, and then we went to sit in a, in a, in a, in a lawn somewhere. And the discussion started from morning and around one o'clock, say, hey, let's hungry. So he took me to Indian restaurant and then back again and again continue discussion until six or seven. Then he dropped me back. And so that was the extended. And since uh, he didn't like uh, my Advaitic position, so he sent me books of Madhyamika book. I want you to read all the book. He, um, he sent a lot of books to me. Of course, I, I couldn't even open them. There is a of course, he saw me so many times. In India, I used to come and then he wanted a debate. Whenever he wants sees me, he wants a debate. So, very, very intelligent guy, extremely intelligent guy. So, we used to argue, 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 argue. And in the, in the Advaitin list, we have some pages and pages of discussion between, between Nanda and myself. Those who are really interested, when the book is ready, you can read. Some of you may have a copy of that, but, <laughs> but it's a very interesting discussion. Anyway, this Vijayaranya uh, says, says, Kechana Vikhvalaha, means they are all confused people. And says, there was non-existence before 
creation. So, sunyam, sunyam means there is nothing. No thing means nothing. Either you can say nowadays the interpretation is no thing means no objects are there. That's what they will interpret. But here there is nothing. Any 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 qualified things cannot be there, or even unqualified. It's absence of everything is sonyam. So that is how they take it and criticize it. So that kind of arguments is asad eva asad evedam. So there was in fact is non-existence alone was there pura before creation asid iti varnayan has been being described by some philosophers and though are they are confused that's what this statement is and how they are confused is going to tell us more magrasyabdo yatakshani Twenty-seven. Yada chani vihalvani tathasya dhihi. Vihalvani tathasya dhihi. Akandai karasam shrutva. Akandai karasam shrutva. Nishprachara bhivetyataha. Nishprachara bhivetyataha. Together. Magnasyabdo yada chani. Vihalvani tathasya dhihi Akhandai karasam shrutva Nishprachara bhibhetyataha So this is, why are they confused? He's giving an example here. Yatha akshani magnasya abdhav So when you are taking and immerse in the, in the, inside the water, when you have dived inside the water or in the, in the ocean and everywhere is nothing but water inside deep, at that time you cannot see anything clearly. So you lose the clarity of vision when you are crowded by this confused water around. Therefore, vihalvani tathasya dhihi. In the same way, their mind is confused because seeing all this that are presented in the Advaita and not knowing what exactly it is, a not clear understanding, they are completely confused and therefore they produced a different theory. The problem here you have to see is these are Nastikas. Nastika means those philosophers for philosophies that do not depend upon Shastra as the basis for the analysis of truth. So there are Astika philosophies and Nastika philosophies. Astika means not God is there, not God is there. Astika, Nastika is on the basis of whether you take Veda as a Pramana or not scripture as a pramana or not, scripture as a means of knowledge or not, has to be, it's based on which these are considered as nastikas. There are, according to the Hindu tradition, our, our, our Acharyas, there are six, there are 12 philosophies or darshanas, of which six are based on or are considered as nastikas and six are astikas. So Vedanta comes under astika because we believe the scripture is a pramana. How scripture is pramana? Existence alone was there before creation. So that statement cannot be made by any other way other than by the scriptures. You cannot logically establish, you cannot the, the uh, uh, direct perceptual you can establish it is scripture alone is a pramana therefore faith in the scriptures is a prerequisite for the statement to accept and the faith is not a blind faith because we just he just gave you logically why it is so so it is even though scripture is the basis but the logic it has to be scripturally logic also and also the uh, the anubhava anubhava means the experience of individuals that go through waking state a dream state and a deep sleep state avasthatre anubhava is there to support all these things so in that way it is sastram and then yukti anubhavam in that order is what is the basis for our scriptures. But if I don't believe in the Shastra, then what do I establish on what basis? The truth. I am only left with logic. Anumana Prama. Anubhavam is there too. Hmm? Anubhavam is there too. 
Yeah, Anubhavam, but experience has to be again logical. Any experience is not a knowledge. Experience should be a basis for developing creating knowledge, knowledge, creating knowledge. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. experience is, a, is a, essentially a perceptual type of data. So, the basis ultimately is logic provides a fundamental basis for this these other philosophers to develop propose. The, their philosophy. So there are six philosophies, including Charvaka. Charvaka means there is nothing. You just born, enjoy maja, and kick the bucket because no one has come back after dying. <laughs> there is neither heaven nor hell. Just you are born anyway. That's a fact. So maja maja, enjoy it. If you don't have it, borrow from somebody, enjoy it. How about returning? That's not your problem. That's other, <laughs> other people's problem. So, <laughs> once you kick the bucket, what happens? Nothing happens. <laughs> because no one has anybody come back and tell me they are in heaven or in hell. <laughs> hell. <laughs> no one has come back. So, what's the big deal? So, that's called Charvaka, materialistic philosophers. Because there are a lot of Charvakas here. So, it's uh, that's also one of the we consider Charvaka Mahamuni. <laughs> we respect him also for his philosophy. So here, what is important is to know that for them, the logic becomes a basis. Anumana Pramana. That's called Anumana Pramana. A means of knowledge is based on logic. So how do you establish a logic? You establish the logic based on the validation of the data. So data means I need a data to make a deduction out of it. So I need a pratyaksha prabana to establish the logic. So logic cannot stay as it is. It has to be based on, again, data only. And data has to be perceived. If they perceive through experiments or through, through understanding or through microscopes or all, some data has is required for which I can deduce from, from that. Say like sp spectral lines, I use that to say there is a quantum mechanics and all that can be done by using particular data. So I am deducing something based on observation. That's what a scientist does. So that's what a logical basis. So essentially what is implied now, Lo they based everything on the logic, but the logic itself is based on perceptual data and therefore everything again comes back to perceptual data and therefore perceptual data is based on what? I am seeing it. So limitations of perceptions will slip through all the way through to the logic also. So this has to be understood. Here, says these are confused people because they are surrounding, surrounded by so much. And also with the philosophies, and what is the philosophy? They are surrounded by the Advaitins who are saying, Akanda ekarasam srutva nishprachara bhibichataha. This Akanda, Akanda means non-divisible. That means it is completely homogeneous. Existence is, there are no divisions of any kind. And ekarasam, ekam, Ekarasam is, is one juice, right? Rasam is juice. So what's the juice of one one juice is? It is Ananda Rasam. Also Vaisaha is the Upanishad. It says, therefore, it is of the nature of Sat and Ananda. Also Chit is included. Shrutva, having listening to the scriptural statements. Nishprachara bhivichyataha. So this is, they get, Nishprachara means they are, get stunned and and Bhiveti, they are afraid of it and therefore they get confused. This is the statement of the, our Acharyas about the Madhyamikas. Whereas according to Nanda, Madhyamikas are very deep. There is a Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna is uh, from Andhra actually. There is a Nagarjuna University also. And he has established the Madhyamika. Madhyamika is in between, <laughs> in the middle path. Middle path was established around the third century, I think, and uh, and very deep an analysis of it, and that's uh, uh, where he says it's a sunya vadam. Okay. I'm not convinced. He said that to me. He's an Advaitin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's why I already gave quiet. <laughs> so, and this. Bhiveti is afraid, fear comes for those also, those who believe in the, the Saguna Brahma Upasana, those people who pray God in the form 
and if you tell them there is no God, they will be really frightened, right? It says you are, it's a blasphemy. <laughs> so what is God? God is, because I'm seeing creation, therefore God came into picture, because no one has seen God, right? So God came into picture because I'm seeing creation, and I deduce that this is a creation, therefore the God is created to create the creation. <laughs> Who created the God? <laughs> Who created the God? That's why we have different types of gods also. So, a, a jiva creates a God so that he can create the jiva <laughs> and the world also. So, this, if you tell that to Advaitin, so Advaitin, from the, when, you, when you go to the Advaitic state, it says, what you are praying is not God. Scripture itself says, says, this chakshusha na pasyati e na chakshum si pasyati tadeva tam viddi nedam edidam upasyate not that you are worshipping is Brahman. It is to the, told to a student who is mature enough to go beyond the names and forms to that. And therefore, when you hear, hear to that kind of teaching, they say, bibheti, says they are really a friend. Hey, you are doing the blasphemy. You go to sin and all that. So this is the statement or uh, is going to be more and more on this from the, in the next on. With this, we'll stop here. We'll do the Purnamadam now. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnamiva Sishyate Om Shanti Shanti Hari Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om